In this video, you'll see how I made these tiny FPV model cars and then raced them around a gigantic 60 meter racetrack that goes down the stairs, out of windows, through tunnels, and even outside. I had a few slot cars when I was younger, but they never really reached their true potential. Each must have done many real world miles over the years, but they never actually went that far. For that reason, I wanted to finally realize my childhood ambition to build a truly massive circuit with seemingly endless pieces of plastic track. But I didn't want to just build any old boring track. This one would make the cars face many perilous obstacles such as stairs, real cars and the infamous British weather. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is going to work. <laughs> the biggest issue though was how myself and my opponent would be able to control both of the racing cars all the way around the circuit without being able to actually see them. The solution was where things would get really interesting though, as I found racing these tiny cars from the perspective of being shrunk down to their level was even more fun than I could have imagined. <laughs> Oh, this is so good. A slot car is a very simple thing. Before video games, these small plastic vehicles were the closest you could get to driving a real racing car from your living room. They're powered by a small motor and are guided along the track with these guide vanes. Power for the car's motor is carried through metal strips next to the groove in the track and is picked up by contacts alongside the guide vane. The voltage is varied by a resistor in the hand controller, so to make the car speed up, you squeeze the trigger and to make the car slow down, you release it. Very simple stuff, but even even as adults, it's a lot of fun to get together and stage a tournament and see how competitive yeah. people get. <laughs> <laughs> so how could I take the humble slot car to the next level using some 21st century technology to make it suitable for my ultimate track? Well, I'd need to be able to control the car on its long journey going from room to room and out of direct line of sight. This track is going to be very long. I think the best way to get around this problem is to create a first person view system, FPV system on the cars. Just like in Formula One, we're going to have a small camera on the car and that's going to transmit video to a receiver. And what we're going to do is receive the video and play it into a pair of video goggles. And this way we'll be able to drive the cars like we're actually sat in them. Like we've just been shrunk down and uh, miniaturized. At first I just used some old gear that I had lying around from past projects, but this was a little too big for the slot cars. Next, I ordered a couple of new micro cameras and video transmitters. These are three in one systems that contain the camera itself, the video transmitter, which transmits analog video, and the antenna. But how was I going to power the cameras on the cars? Well, initially I thought about powering the cameras directly from the track, but I thought this might cause some issues, such as what happens when the car is stationary with no voltage being applied to the track. There are many ways I could have solved this problem through through building some sort of energy storage system on board with capacitors or something. But instead I decided to just delete the problem and instead fit small batteries that are strapped to the top of the cars. But how long would each battery last? Unfortunately, these tiny video transmitters are actually seriously power hungry and make the batteries last just five and a half minutes before dropping below 3.2 volts. This was okay though, as I had lots of these small one cell batteries and the cars might just need a pit stop or two to change batteries halfway through the race. Now it was time to set up a test track and I soon found that driving the cars like this from the cockpit was a lot of fun. It feels just like a very fast video game. It's not at all like driving a real car or anything but it does feel like you're right there sat in one of these models hurtling past plug sockets and 3D printers at ridiculous speeds. It's a real challenge for your reactions. So we've solved one big problem, now onto the problem of building the track. How would I build bridges and make the cars travel upstairs? This scale electric track is quite flexible when attached together but I was interested to see whether it could support itself and make free hanging bridges. With a bit of tape on each end it could and it seemed that the cars could run along it quite easily when at speed. The cars would tend to get a bit stuck though if the angle between track pieces was too aggressive. Go too slow over these pieces and the cars would bottom out so minimizing this would be ideal for reliable running. Okay so I knew that the cars could get across bridges quite easily but what about hills? What was the maximum angle that one of these tiny cars could drive at without losing traction and slipping back down again? Well I had a feeling that they'd go at some pretty extreme angles actually and that's because these little cars are equipped with a secret weapon, downforce. Yes, that's right, these cars use magnets to create some sort of simulated downforce for better grip on the corners and more traction when accelerating. Without them, the cars would fly off much easier when going around a corner. As these little Mini Cooper cars are so small and light, the magnets are actually extremely powerful. I started testing the Mini at 20 degrees and that was no problem whatsoever. At 45 degrees, it was just the same story. And amazingly, at 90 degrees, the Mini could still get to the top and was seemingly unstoppable until I dropped it. Whoops. 
This was where I found another problem. Just like the real original Mini, these cars are quite fragile, which suggested that any big crash during the race might result in a DNF. So both drivers would have to be very careful when going over dangerous obstacles. While talking about ways to kill a slot car, what would happen if it rained? I wanted the track to involve an outdoor section, but with rain being likely for the day of the race, I was keen to find out whether slot cars could race in wet conditions, just like real racing cars can. Firstly, I ran an unmodified old car up and down a wet track several times, and it worked just fine. I decided though to take extra precautions. I should coat the electronics of the Minis with a product called Corrosion X, which is great for protecting exposed connections and making sure that water doesn't get into anything sensitive. As the FPV gear is definitely not waterproof, I covered the camera and transmitter in it too, being careful to avoid getting any on the lens of course. Now I could be confident that the cars could speed through the rain all day without an issue. One thing you might be thinking about building such a large track is, will there be enough power for the entire thing? Well, I was wondering this too, so I measured the resistance of a length of track and multiplied it by the amount of track I had for the circuit. The drop wasn't that significant, but I decided that I should probably double check by assembling half of the straight track I had to see if there was a noticeable lack of power at the far end. Thankfully everything seemed just fine and the car had more than enough power even when 30 meters away. The FPV footage was also crystal clear with no breakups, even when absolutely flooring it at maximum speed. Right, before I show you how we built the track, firstly it's time for a very quick ad from the sponsor of this week's video, Established Titles. Established Titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It's a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. Your certificate features a unique plot number, which means that you can see the exact location of your land. They plant a tree with every order, and work with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. You can even officially change your name to Lord or Lady if you wanted to, and get it on your credit cards, plane tickets, and that kind of thing. They even have couple packs, which come with adjoining plots of land, so that's nice. It makes for an amazing last minute gift, and established titles are actually running an early Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use the code Project Air, you'll get an additional 10% off. So go to establishedtitles.com slash Project Air to get your gifts and help support the channel. Thanks very much to Established Titles for sponsoring this video, and now here's how we built the track. All right, the day is here. I'm going to be joined by this person. Of course, I need a competitor, so we've got yes, Matt here. that's me. Uh, <laughs> and now we're going to set up the slot car track so we can have a good old race. Right, a tour of the track and its many obstacles. So let's build this thing. First of all, we've got the staircase. We know that the cars can travel almost vertical, so this should be no problem whatsoever. Twisting around the circuit, we go into the other bit of the building, which is the night stage. This is where the cars shoot down a straight, going as fast as they can through this shelving unit. They'll come out of here, straight down here into the garage section, and this is where they will shoot out into the blazing sun, and right underneath the real-life counterpart of these little cars. Then we'll be going through this car park, and back through the front door. Now, this is the interesting bit. How do we get back up here? Well, we could just go straight up the stairs, but I think it would be more interesting to, seeing as though we know the cars can go vertical, to go straight up here and over the top. Once we get over the top, we'll go over a bridge. The bridge will take us over here to this side of my original office. And then they'll be hurtling straight over the start finish line and yes, go for another lap. And I forgot to mention, we've also got this, which is a jump. So I think we should put that on the start finish line because I think that's where we might come off quite a lot and we won't want to walk very far. <laughs> it's going to go straight off onto the floor, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Lost it. No. Whoops. Right, time to start laying track around the office. With the main workshop section done, we started to extend the track out onto the staircase. Matt working on a makeshift bridge to the vertical ascent stage, and myself working on the stair descent section. Matt made use of some foam board to support the track pieces and held them aloft with a stool and a tripod. A nice improvised DIY solution. We were making fast progress, but it wasn't long until a problem emerged with trying to build such an extreme track like this. Just watching out for the connections because sometimes they go like that with the pressure on the track. This problem meant that we had to keep testing each new section to catch these separation issues. Beautiful! Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you might have to practice that. <laughs> um, that's good. 
Once we'd fixed this, it was time to tackle the most ambitious and equally most unprepared part of the track, the vertical ascent. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Yet. Right, you ready to lower this thing a bit more? It was at this point we realised that we probably should have thought about this a bit more ahead of time. It didn't work. It broke. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what we were expecting really. <laughs> we could have taped the track together, or maybe screwed it to some wood lent against the wall, but also the angle of the track pieces was too aggressive, and the cars would be travelling too slowly at this point to get over the joins without stalling or falling off. And falling off here might be game over. So how's it going Matt? We've got an alternative solution now, haven't we? It's much cooler, the new plan. So instead of having a crazy, steep, super steep, unrealistic ramp, We've got now a hill climb, so the car is going to come in through that window and uh, the route will require you to climb up the hill, so that's the hill climb section. And then back down again. The rest of the track went together very quickly, and it wasn't long until we had some pretty cool features, all connected up ready for a test run. The tunnel section was pretty cool, as were the trackside LED light strips. We even made use of a real car to raise the track up into the window. So we've, uh, we've done. I think. Hey, <laughs> nice the last one. section through the car. One piece remaining. One piece remaining. <laughs> Can it's ridiculous. You that? We did it perfectly. How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> we needed to see if the cars could make it the entire way around with no issues, so we decided to do a few practice laps. <laughs> Leaving the office, firstly we have Daring Descent, where the cars will go bombing down the staircase. Carefully navigating a tight left-hander, next there is a very fast straight going into the Monaco Tunnel. Following this we have Tire Turn, which leads into the appropriately named Cooper Corner, and this bit of track features a crossover, so both drivers will have to be extra careful here. Next we have a ramp called Uprise, which allows the miniature cars to power their way back into the building through the window, and then up the hill climb, which takes them to the office, which features another crossover, and then finally we have the Jump of Doom, just before the finish. Oh, and we did the cross the line. <laughs> now it was time to put on our racing goggles and get ready to race the biggest slot car circuit Matt and I had ever seen. Okay, it's time to race. So which car do you want? I'll go for the white. Okay, Matt's on the white car. I'm on the red car. And as we know, this track is quite long. So if one of us falls off, then we're going to be at quite the disadvantage. Try not to crash, Matt. <laughs> After all that preparation, testing and track construction, it all came down to this. Who would win? Would both of us finish? On your marks. Get set, go! Both cars were away, myself heading the charge down Daring Descent, but Matt wasn't too far behind, and soon he would take the lead at the Monaco Tunnel. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, we're neck and neck. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh that's so good. good. Momentarily, I got ahead until Matt dived down the inside like an absolute madman. Oh, 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 <laughs> Matt pulled ahead as my car struggled up the hill climb and back into the office. Oh, I'm right behind you. Come on. I see, so you, ahead. It's I see you just ahead. Whoa, Daring Descent got a bit faster. Oh, I'm right behind you on Daring Descent. Matt was still ahead, so I knew I needed to really put my foot down, or finger down, to catch him on the straights. Oh, I swear Where are you? Sound. Oh, it's really Oh, no, I thought you'd stop or something because I couldn't hear you. I'm going, I'm going over We've to your right. Oh, no, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Oh, no, Matt. Well, I'm going to gain a bit here. <laughs> With Matt stranded in an awkward position, I managed to pull out ahead, but Matt had soon nudged his car back into action and I was feeling the pressure. I could have eased off, but made a crucial mistake at Daring Descent. Oh, no, my God! <laughs> I'm following you down. <laughs> <laughs> Matt had taken the lead, but then came a cropper on a dodgy bit of track. Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm gonna make some ground. <laughs> Now I was in the lead again, but with half race distance coming up, it was time to make a pit stop. Oh no! <laughs> Crashed off the circuit! With my car falling hundreds of scale feet onto the studio floor, I'd broken my camera mount, so needed to quickly hot glue the camera back into position. Meanwhile, Matt had closed the gap and came in for the undercut. Are you doing a pit stop? I'm doing a pit stop. Pit stop made. It's all made. Yep. <sighs> Got a new battery in the car. I'm changing my battery. I'm way behind. My pistol's very slow. This gave Matt a big advantage, and he managed to pull a very decent gap. You're a lap ahead of me, almost. I'm going to go past you. Here I am. I'm going. I'm going. I saw him go past you. Here I am. Woo! Come straight. Let's 
go! Yeah! Oh my god! With this being the penultimate lap, things were hotting up even more. Matt is way in the lead right now. They're in descent right now. Okay, I'm going around the office to uh, over the jump. Oh, what a jump! Yeah. Oh no, down the cubicle there! Oh yes! This gives me a chance to reclaim the lead! <laughs> I just saw his shoes. <laughs> Where are you? Cooper Corner? I'm, I'm still not quite behind you. I'm not quite, I'm not quite. Oh, right. Let's go. Oh, come on, I need to put the beans down here. And I'm on the uh, hill climb now, coming into the studio. Oh, I'm actually, here I go. She's trying to really chase you now. I think we've only got one more lap to go after this. Oh, I'm in the studio too. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yes, and I take the lead. I was neck and neck on the final stretch. I can't believe it's so close! This was the final lap, and unbelievably, we were still trading places until Matt took the inside line on his route to victory. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> take that, Matt. <laughs> Matt roared into the lead at Uprise, and with my car wheel spinning up the hill climb, surely my chances were shot. But then, last minute drama. Straight back, the Oh no, we got lost! Oh, no. <laughs> I did not. Oh, I got past it! There we go! I think you won that. Okay. Wait, who, who actually won? You, you actually won? went across the line fast. I did. But I you... came off the ramp. I you won. I won. <laughs> yeah. No. That's I so came unfortunate. Off, I was on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Matt just fell off on the last obstacle, and I managed to beat him by like that much. <laughs> Literally. That I'm so sorry about that. I feel like that was completely unfair, but. I believe that's on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I, that was such bad luck for, for Matt just falling off at the last corner. <laughs> or the last hurdle, I mean. Literally the last hurdle. The last little obstacle that we had here. And I, I was just behind him, so I managed to just <laughs> clench victory from the jaws of defeat. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, good race. <laughs> yes, I mean, I'm exhausted. Me too. <laughs> If you like this video, then here's another one that I think you might like. And also, thank you very much to my Patreons, of course, for helping me to actually get all of this track for this video. If you want to support my Patreon, there's a link in the description. And there's also a link to my new website where you can find my new downloadable project kits. Thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next video.